Hey guys, welcome back to another episode on how to defend. And today we'll be looking at how can we check if our mobile device has already been hacked. Okay, so this is going to be a little more technical. Okay, so we need some form of command line interface to find out the processes as well as the network outbound connections that we're having from our mobile device all the way out onto the internet. Okay, or into some hacking server that is in control of our mobile devices. So the first thing we want to do is, of course, I want to highlight over here, I have an Android device running on the left side of the screen, as you can see. And it can be the same for a physical Android device that you can do the same too. Okay, so you can go ahead and plug in your Android device into your computer system, which already has Android Debark Bridge running. So if you're not sure what is Android Debark Bridge, we have a video tutorial on that. So do check it out on the channel. So what we're going to do now is to actually go ahead and open up command prompt. Okay, so go ahead and open that up. And of course, I'm going to zoom in a little more so it's easier for you to see. Okay, so I'm going to put this as 428. Okay, so what we'll do now is to actually kickstart ADB. So we'll need a connection into the Android device. So this gives us shell and we can issue some interesting commands to find out what's going on on the device. Okay, on the background, on the background, I actually have a call Linux machine running. So we'll look at what's normal and what is abnormal. What are some of the indicators that your phone has already been compromised? So first of all, you can go ahead and enter ADB devices. And this will show us a list of Android devices that are connected to your computer system. Okay, so you can do the same for any form of operating system. So go ahead and enter ADB shell. And this will bring us into the device itself. So now we are currently controlling the device on the left side that you can see. So, of course, one of those things that we can do is to issue some commands. And one of those commands is, of course, Netstat. So, Netstat help us find out what are some of the outbound connection or established connections that we have. And a really important area is over here. Okay, the really important area is over here. So, we have here what is normal. Okay, so we have an established connection, active internet connections. Okay, so over here, this is what we're seeing. All right. And what I'm going to do next is over here. I already have a malicious application installed into the device. And on the backdrop, I'm going to start up Metasploit. Okay, so I'm going to go into Terminal. Okay, so this is called Linux. I'm going to enter MSF Console to start up Metasploit. And I'm going to open up, okay, a reverse shell from the device all the way into the Kali Linux system. Okay, so go ahead and enter. So I'm going to set the payload now. Okay, so I will, of course, enter IP ADDR to find out the IP address of the Kali Linux machine and set the L hosts. So, of course, in this case, our IP address of our Kali Linux machine is 192.168.0.106. Go ahead and hit enter on that. Enter show options to see all the listed options and go ahead and enter exploit. So, basically, what I'm doing here is to start up a hacking server that would then give us control of the Android device. So, of course, once the Android device and the user has those applications running, okay, and the user has clicked onto the malicious application, and sometimes, right, what the hackers will do is they will use a legitimate application and they will embed this malicious software on top of it, and this will give them a instantaneous access into the mobile device, giving them access to the geolocation, the SMSs, everything, okay. So over here, what we're saying is that we have a, L port of 4444 that's running. So it can be any other port numbers that hackers could be using to gain control of your device. All right. And if I go into command prompt now, and if I enter, okay, I enter up arrow. So I enter netstat once more. Let me just increase the font size so it's a little more easier for you to see to 36. Okay. So what I'll do next is again the same issuing the same command enter netstat. All right, and what we will see here, okay, if I scroll back up to the top again, all right, so unlike the earlier results that we got in, all right, so going back to the top, we can see a foreign address, all right, of port 4444. Okay, so we see that there is a connection, all right, coming in from the device, okay. This is an outbound connection to a foreign address, and this is definitely something amiss, okay. So the other things, we can look out for not just the network connection, which could be showing all the suspicious outbound connections. Okay, so why would a mobile device have such a connection outwards? Okay, so that's something to take note of, all right, as part 
of doing investigation whether a device has already been compromised. The second thing that we can take a look at is in terms okay, of looking at the list of users, looking at the processes that are actually being run in the system. So you can enter top, all right, T-O-P, enter on that. And this will show us, okay, all the different processes that are actually running inside the Android device. In our case, okay, we have shell running, all right, and we have all this number of users over here. So we have root, we have system, we have U0, okay, and we have all these different users who are actually inside the environment right now. And of course, we have no idea what they're doing, right? So we're trying to investigate what's going on. So of course, I can go ahead and enter again, top, and we can see all the different information, all right, as well as the users, the processes they're running, and so on and so forth. So of course, on the on our case over here, okay, what we are seeing is that there are certain processes that shouldn't be there. There's certain processes that are suspicious. And of course, in our case, if I go back to Call Linux, and if I enter shell, all right, this means that the hacker is having a command line interface into the device, all right? And for example, if the hacker enter who am I, and they get the username over here. So we can see the username as u0 underscore a134. Okay, so in our case, when we go back to command prompt, looking at the top, okay, we can see over here, okay, we have a user u0a134, and they have a shell. So if you think about it, all right, if you think about it from a mobile device perspective, why would a mobile device have a shell running? Why would a mobile device have a terminal running at all? Okay, so this is another big indicator that your device could have already been compromised and a hacker is interfacing at the shell level. Okay, so that can be another form of indicator of attack, okay? Next, and the final sharing is of course in terms of looking at PS. PS stands for processes they're running. So you can enter PS, okay, and this will list out all the processes inside the system. So you can enter PS dash capital A, and we can see all of those different processes they're running inside the system. And of course, we're looking out again for certain processes that shouldn't be there. So for example, over here, okay, we have the common ones like com dot android, and we have here com dot metasploit dot stage. So metasploit, of course, is a hacking framework that we use and we have done a lot of lectures and tutorials on it so that is going to be one suspicious indicator okay the other suspicious indicators are going to be shell all right shell is also another suspicious indicator if it is being run as a process inside your mobile device okay so this are some of the processes and indicators of attacks that we can look at or indicators compromise that we can look at okay so there are many many other ways for us to further future future down into what exactly is going on in the process, look out for what is as considered normal and what is considered abnormal in those situations, in those cases. All right, and this is how we're able to detect when there is a cyber attack inside our system. Okay, so with that, I hope you've learned something valuable in today's tutorial. And if you like what you've just watched, remember to like, share and subscribe to the channel so that you can be kept abreast of the latest cybersecurity tutorial. Thank you so much once again for watching.